Hey, it's Guilherme and today we are going to take a look on a new Godot 3.1 feature which is constructive solid geometries. We're going to take a look on the types that you can use, more complex use cases and some of its limitations. Putting in more simple terms what you're going to do using CSG is using two or more meshes and adding operations on top of them to create more complex ones. This allows us to take for instance primitives as we're doing here and create several different shapes out of them. Later we are going to see a complete map that we created only using primitives and you'll see how powerful this tool can be. Now as I said we are going to take some primitives and we are going to add operations to them. The operations that we have available to us are union, intersection and subtraction. Instead of talking about them, I believe it's easier to just see how they work. The first one which is union, we have two cubes and what we are getting out of it is a solid geometry that is composed by both of them. We're not going to have anything here in the middle and if we zoom in you'll be able to see that our geometry does not have two cubes one inside of the other it is in fact one solid piece of geometry composed by both of the cubes here in the scene tree we can expand the union node and you notice that as a child of it we have a csg box and this box here in the operation in the inspector has the union operation selected you can find all of these csg nodes by going to add node and searching for CSG and here you can see all of the primitives that we have and we also have a CSG mesh which allows us to use any type of mesh even something that we created in an outside program like Blender for instance and apply the CSG operations on top of it and also the CSG combiner which is a node that we're going to take a look later on. Now continuing with our operations besides union we also have intersection here we are intersecting one cube with the other and what intersection is going to do is only take the part of both meshes that are intersecting each other. And in the case of the subtraction, we're going to subtract the mesh from its parent. Also keep in mind that the operations happen from the child to the parent. So we have to select the operation that we want to apply on the child, in this case our CSG box. And here if I change the operation from subtraction to intersection, you notice that the shape has changed. And on our parent node, we haven't changed anything. So you can select anything that you want here and it's not going to affect the outcome of the shape. Now, this is the map that we created using only CSG primitives. As you can see, we have a small room, we have some details, we have some windows, we have this weird bridge in the middle of our game. We have some details on our walls. And if we jump, we get to a tunnel that would lead to some other room and so on and so forth. Everything here was made mostly using the subtraction operation but that is because that's what I'm most used to using. Some other users might have different opinions on which one they use more or less. But as you can see, the CSG nodes are really powerful for creating prototypes and mocking levels. These do not take me much time to create and if I was going to create this using Blender for instance I would have to get out of the engine and then model it over there and if I wanted to make some changes to the map because I didn't think it looked okay I would have to go all the way to Blender once again modify, export it, go back to Godot and then test to see if everything was working as I intended it to do With the CSG nodes we get the power of staying inside of Godot and making changes on the fly with hot reload which gives us a really fast workflow Now let's see how our map was created if you look on the outside, all we see is this gray box, but once we zoom in, you can see the structures of our map. I'm already going to apologize if you see something lagging, that is because I am recording and also the CSG nodes are really processing and consuming sometimes, so that might happen during recording. So let's expand our map node. Here we have the outer walls, which are this CSG box that you see on the outside, and inside of it we have the inner walls which is this room right here as you can see this inner wall has as the operation subtraction so we are subtracting from our solid cube this part right here which makes the level of our map inside of our inner node we have a csg combiner and inside of it we are holding our details for our map which are all of these structures that you are seeing right here the CSG combiner is mostly used to combine different shapes and then use other combiners to create more complex shapes though here we are using it more as a structural node to hold everything in place and make our game tree more organized which is also a good use case for it. 
Now looking back we have our first room which is the intro of our game and it's hold inside of our intro node. Here the one that we're going to focus is our big passage which is this structure that you're seeing right here. We can open it scene so we can have a better look on it and to create this structure what we used was was a CSG box and then we added several other CSG boxes to create these shapes that you are seeing. We have two CSG box on the outside which are carving these details that we have on our passage. We then have a combiner which is holding another CSG box which is carving the inside of our outer box. And once again we have two other CSG boxes carving this box right here which is then going to carve the big passage to create the inner passage. Another interesting aspect of our game scene is the bridge that we have right here. So let's open the bridge scene. And here you can see that our bridge is made up by a path and a CSG polygon. The CSG polygon has three modes, depth, spin and path. The one that we're using here is the path and this is going to make our CSG polygon to expect a path to be set here on the path node. And this is the path that we are using. If we decide to modify our path, you can see that the CSG polygon is going to update itself and this makes it really easy to modify our game and create complex shapes by using paths and then later use it on our map. One thing to keep in mind when using the path is that as of now it's not really optimal the UX that we have. If you notice our bridge is really wide and this had to be set manually here on our polygon. Another thing is that we had to set invert faces to on. If not, this would be the result that we would get from this node. And again, this is not really optimal. I'm not sure if this is a bug. Now back to our game scene, we also have this tunnel. And this tunnel is made up by a CSG cylinder, which is not completely cylindrical because we are using a CSG box with an intersection operation, which we can use to define how big we want our tunnel to be. And here we have a more complex use case when we are using CSG nodes. As I said, our CSG box has the operation set to intersection and our tunnel, on the other hand, has it set to union, even though it is subtracting from our outer walls. That is because it is a child of our inner walls, which in their case has the operation subtraction. So what's happening here is that we are unifying our tunnel with our inner walls and both of them are subtracting from our outer walls, which gives us this result right here. Besides that, we also have our roof small lights, which once again are set to union, even though they are subtracting from our outer walls, and also our windows. And lastly, there is one more setting that you have to pay attention to when you are working with CSG nodes, and that is using collisions. If we select our outer walls, you can see that here in the inspector, we have the use collision property, and right now it's set to true, but by default, it is set to off, because it's not always that you're going to use collisions with your CSG objects, but if you are creating a map, for instance, you're gonna wanna turn this on. This way, your players or enemies or whatever you have in your game are gonna be able to collide with your object. Now, some of the limitations that you have when using CSG nodes is it can lag depending on the mesh sizes that you are using and how powerful your computer is. Try not to create shapes that are really complex because that can really lag your computer, especially when you have them selected as I have it here, but if your computer can handle it, feel free to play around with them. Now even though before I said that CSG meshes are mostly used to create prototypes or mock levels, they're not limited to it. You can of course use them to create complete games and this has already been done. For instance Superhot, which is a game that was made using Unity and Unity's Pro Builder. Even though Unity's Pro Builder is not the same as the CSG system that we have here, it pretty much plays the same role as CSG plays here in Godot. And here we have a prototype that we are working in the studio and the goal is to fly with your ship down this cave. The map that you are seeing was created using only a single CSG box and a CSG polygon. And this allowed us to start to prototype the ship and how it feels and how we want it to move without having to create any assets. So back in Godot, if we take a look on our CSG polygon, this is what composes our map and we can tweak it to make it harder or easier for the player and after we have a base here we can then go back to something like Blender and create the map as we want it to be and add all the details that we are going to need in the final game. But this really helped us to have a faster workflow and without having to keep passing 
files between me and the artist, which makes life easier. Here we showcase CSG being used mostly to create levels, but you can use it to create different things like props for your world, also cars, and even characters if you want to. Now as always, the project that we used here in the tutorial is available on GitHub, so if you want to play around with it, feel free to. Thank you so much for watching, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section, and I'll see you in the next one.